Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's Talkie Box. I put that shit on everything. Oh, it's All so good. It, right? It's Ma- so mostly good. the bumper stickers. Yeah, we put on the bumper stickers. We put on that shirt. Yeah. I mean, everything. And then you everything. can put that shirt or that bumper sticker on everything. On, yeah. And it's so delicious. Yeah. I mean, it's the mostly shirt butter. Or the bumper sticker? The Talkie Box. Oh, yeah. 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 Mostly butter. Paula Dean loves us. Sweet. Salty <laughs> fat. It's wonderful. But not for the reason that y'all think. Uh, <laughs> it's not for that reason. It's, it's the butter reason. It's definitely it's, it's because of definitely our culinary expertise. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we do have a lot of culinary expertise at this yeah, t- well, well, I mean, we've all worked in there restaurants. Is <laughs> there is a lot of some culinary, culinary expertise, expertise at this table. At this table. Yeah. We've <clears throat> all been around food for most of our lives. I've for actually sure. been around food nearly my entire life. Yeah. I've been around food. I've been eating it for a good portion of that time as well. Like yeah. 98%. Like uh, off the tit straight into food, right? right. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like good is for that you. food? Yeah. Let's let's let me get some of that. Oh, introductions. I'm Dave. And with me is Jason. I'm Jason. And Justin. Audio, Hi. audio podcast too, man. You guys speak. How's it going? And then we also have Tony working the boards for us helping us out tonight. Woo! We First timer in the house. That's right. And he Tony. was like, he was like, I'm not gonna be on the show. Fuck you guys. Yeah, we'll get him out of here eventually. You guys will get to see how handsome he is. And then we gotta get somebody else to work the board. Right now, we're just gonna try and <laughs> just egg him in into like a baseball getting roster. getting a little voice yeah. from the shadows. They'll be like, "Where is that fourth voice coming from?" The shadows. I fucking just told you. <laughs> yeah. Pay attention. God, nobody listens anymore. No, it takes a magician to keep a kid's attention these days. Are you a magician? No. I mean, I've done some tricks, but <laughs> not the Paula Dean kind of trick. <laughs> I, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. No. Oh. You lost me on that. Culinary expertise. Mm. Yeah. There, um, there's some around here. What would you say your absolute best meal to prepare is? Like, you've, you've cooked some things, right? Well, I've cooked a lot of things. You've made some headway in a kitchen. Mm-hmm. What would you say the most dynamic entree you've ever put together is? Think about that. Dave. Puerco Pabillo. I'm sorry, pardon me? Puerco Pabillo. I can't hear you through this thing. Yeah, because that's the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Can you hear me in your headphones? Yeah. That's good, because I said Puerco Pabillo. Uh, Puerco are you still working on your Pabillo? Portuguese? Uh, it's, that's actually uh, Mexican. Mexican dish. Mexican dish. And yes, I am. We're going for <laughs> All right, good. No, pork up a veal. It's a it's a slow roasted, uh, spicy pork. Okay. It takes like four hours to cook. Okay. But it's fantastic. So the oven does most of the work. Yes. <laughs> good. Yeah. That's awesome. It's like an hour to prep, four hours to cook. So, mm-hmm. yeah, eighty percent of the time the oven's doing the work. Did you bring any sides with it? It's typically on rice. Okay. But yeah, that's about it. Like what kind of rice? Just a white rice? You do white a rice is fine. long you do grain? Maybe some dirty rice. You like a dirty rice? I like I like all kinds of things dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna no rebuttal? Your rebuttal? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> I was gonna ask him. To you know, give us more data on nope. the dirty things that he likes, but I didn't run the list. Some things are better left unsaid. Yeah, that's true. I was really safeguarding the children at home. I think you've tried my pork mobile before. I may have. Did I enjoy uh, it? Everyone enjoys it. It's fantastic. Okay, then I probably did try it. Way to go. Yeah, and yeah. I probably loved it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make it again soon. I'll save some for for talking box. You guys, yeah, try it. we'll eat it right here on the show. <laughs> we'll take like five minutes of just <laughs> lip smacking in front of everybody. Uh. Mm, that is good, Dave. Way to go. Mm, mm. mm. Oh, it's a bit spicy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this at home. <laughs> smell a vision. So uh smell a vision. Now that you've had plenty of time. So I would say that uh, you know, in terms of dynamic dishes, I've worked a lot of in casual dining, so I've seen a lot of different kinds of dishes go out, uh, and have helped prepare many of them, but I wouldn't say that there's any one like super dynamic dish that I've done. I'm very good at the basics. Like I can, I can make a very, very good steak dinner, but if like you want something really fancy, I'm going to be going by a recipe the whole, the whole time I'll get it done, but it's not going to be with a, uh, an experienced hand. So you've never just gone into a, pardon me. You've never just gone into a kitchen with, and just grabbed ingredients and just been like, Oh, absolutely. I'm going to put together, a pasta that I've never tried before or, or some kind of like... Yeah, but you're talking about kitchen, like restaurant kitchen experimenting, which is completely different than like 
experimenting as a chef or experimenting from a kitchen at home where you're grabbing things oftentimes that have already been pre-prepared for other items and you're just batching them together in something. I've had some pretty good dishes that way, but I'd say the most uh, dynamic cooking I ever did was when we did uh, we did something uh, several years ago now. We called it Aluminum Chef. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, you, yeah, we yeah, brought yeah. it up on the show. Yeah, you can't sue us because we used a different metal. Right. Um, but that was probably the most dynamic we ever, I ever like, actually dove into food. And it, it plus probably like, makes it safer if you call it Aluminium Chef. Aluminium yeah. Chef, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> well, you just brought the show to a standstill. That was, that yeah, was yeah, the no, last I'm done. episode. I'm done. That was the last <laughs> episode, right? Or the episode before that? I don't know. We talked about aluminum and him. Oh. Go. One time, did we? Yeah, it was I've never heard that word before. When we were doing the the E3 show, yeah, uh, aluminium. Yeah, see, he was <clears> there <throat> for it. Why am I the only one that remembers past shows? It's not that you're the only one remembers. You're the only one who's talking about it right now. Though. All right. Well, I'm also the only one bringing up subjects. So, <laughs> what was my best dish? You ask. Well, I'll tell you. Tell me, Jason. Um, we're dying to find out. I would say it's it's actually a a steak and asparagus penne pasta. Okay. Like I, I trimmed down some steak into like, kind of like a sheet steak, but I don't know. I just cut it off a ribeye, so I don't know what sheet steak comes off of. But I've never heard of sheet steak. Well, it's just you know like what you would cook like, a filly out of or something like that. It's oh, like okay. it's like flat steak. Yeah. I just basically right. cut some some small pieces of right. flat steak and then grilled it up with some. Uh, White wine, butter, a little garlic salt, and some asparagus in it. You know, put a little good. bit of penne yes. as the base. The penne? <laughs> the penne. <laughs> you know, I get it from three brothers. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have been there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They have all they of my used favorite to sponsor Italian us. things. <laughs> <laughs> they used to sponsor us. Uh, Tony might actually know some of the guys. <laughs> um, he might actually be one of the guys. <laughs> I'm not sure. But, yeah, so really good. I do a lot of things with pasta is my favorite medium. Like it's I do a great idea. macaroni bake with just uh, sliced peeled tomatoes and onions mm -hmm. and macaroni and some Velveeta. That reminds me. I got to get back in touch with this ex-girlfriend of mine. Her grandmother had this amazing mac and cheese recipe that we made a couple times, and I have no idea what was in it anymore. Yeah, you should, like, you should open to... the conversation that way. <laughs> like, hey, your grandmother, she's still making that mac and cheese. So listen, I know that, you know, things ended, but uh, I'm having a hankering for that mac and cheese, yeah. so whatever it is I have to do, <laughs> you just let me know. I need Nana to send that my way. I mean, would it be good chipped, though? Or are you just going to ask for the recipe? I just want the recipe. I'll make it myself. <laughs> you might have to do some serious things mm -hmm. <laughs> to get Nana's recipe. Yeah. There might not even be a middleman involved. You may have to go straight to Nana. Yep. Well, Nana's flying in from the airport on Tuesday. <laughs> She's going to need you to pick her up. Yep. Got to show her a good time. Yep. Yeah, we the, need you to put her up in a hotel. Back. <laughs> we don't have a guest room, so you're going to have to put her up. Okay. Per diem, whole nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not giving her per diem. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's $7.14. The only <laughs> way to the mac and cheese I must show you. <laughs> she just spends the next week training you, right, to make the perfect. Then we get a cheese. montage. That would be, of course, fantastic. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yeah, if we could get some kind of a, a mac and cheese master, <laughs> where you're you're like ninja slicing blocks of yeah. cheese in one scene, <laughs> like out in the foggy woods somewhere. Right. Who knows how you got there? It doesn't matter. It does not you're matter. Mastering no. the mac and cheese. There's she's just great watching you. song playing in the mm. background. You're she's just watching like you stir, and she just shakes her head slowly. Rolling and no. shaping your own noodles. Right. Ah, while she just whips you from behind. <laughs> Faster, stronger. What accent was <laughs> well, that? <laughs> that's none of your damn business, oh. sir. All right. Oh, sorry, I, Nana. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I put a label on it, I become a racist. <laughs> So you don't that's become what does one yeah. once you do that. <laughs> <laughs> there are steps leading up to that well before we get to a point of putting a label on it. <laughs> Whatever. I'm, I'm comfortable with myself. <laughs> that makes one of us. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, it's... It's a thing. So traffic. 
traffic. <laughs> God, that fucking sucks. <laughs> That's where Just we're Just like that okay. segue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what, traffic, what do you have to say about traffic? Traffic sucks. sucks. I drove really far uh-huh. today in Atlanta traffic, and it wasn't even rush hour. It was like about the 2 p.m. Like inside Atlanta? Yeah. Why were you in Atlanta? Why wasn't I in Atlanta? Yeah. I don't have an answer to that. Right. I'm, I'm not the one well, who's I'm there. I'm going to keep going then. Okay. So I went really far, and it was hot, and I don't use air conditioning because I'm cheap. Right. So I'm just sweating, just sweating in that downtown traffic. By choice. And and people are are jockeying for position like they're going to get further in life somehow <laughs> by, like, getting that extra quarter mile. Yeah. And it just... I hate them. I hate everything about them. I can't wait till there's some solution to traffic. Now he says it's gonna be. It's gonna be those autonomous vehicles. The man. autonomous electric cars, but that's like what 2040, 2050. I need something to happen now. You're impatient. Yep. I instant am. gratification. I'm a mortal. You. I'm so he a wants. Mortal. He wants instant gratification, but he's upset at the people who are getting it with that extra quarter mile. <laughs> I mean, but are they really getting it? In that moment, they are. And then they have to stop. They're like, damn. But then they get another opportunity. Well, I was saying that, like, you can make an impact on the way home and, like, cutting down the traffic, but only if you, like, are an asshole on an extreme level. <laughs> like, cutting people off left and right, mm-hmm. riding on the shoulder, <laughs> just, like, just shoving your, yourself into a lane. Yeah. You can cut a good five Maybe even 10 minutes off your ride, depending on the length of it. But you're being a real dick in the process. That's true. And the likelihood of you getting pulled over, well, let's face it, during rush hour, it's almost nil. Right. Assholes don't get pulled over during rush hour. It's insane. And granted, you're being an asshole, but at the same time, you're never going to see those people again. They're never going to be like, that's the guy. Oh, yeah, I hate that guy. You would think that, but there have been times when I've worked jobs that were actually like shift work jobs Mm -hmm. and i often got stuck in traffic in like surge style traffic with some same cars like especially like cars with stickers and stuff on the back i've noticed that too i i I catch a few of the same cars on the way back home some days just like riding on that road right before i turn onto uh rock spring it's so you figure you know 300 days a year or whatever you're driving to and from on the same Mm-hmm. On the same exact schedule, there's a good chance that the same assholes are pissing you <laughs> off every single day. That's true. Very true. Yeah. So my solution. All right. My solution. Now we get to the meat of the argument. Yeah. Is either A, we just go ahead and make it ridiculously impossible to get a driver's license. And then people will have to start carpooling and using mass transit. Now, that's not very likely to happen <laughs> because that would crash the economy. Yeah. So I say we trim down cars, make them go karts like bumper car style, right? <laughs> okay. Put a governor on them so they can't go over like fifty miles an hour, and then just everybody, we just take the speed limits away, we take the traffic laws away, and we just, you just go. The problem with that is people are gonna be popping those governors right off. Yeah, and there's also the logistics of you know ground transport. You know, semi trucks aren't going to be able to be go karts bumping yeah, into sure things. They will. No, they won't. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they will. They won't be able to pull anything. <laughs> they they won't be logistically plausible. No, but, implausible. But it would be really neat to see a, a go kart pulling an, a, <laughs> Change a tractor it. trailer. It would be really neat to see a jumbo jet pulling a tractor trailer. Change it. It would be really neat to see a jumbo jet pulling the lips off of Justin. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so your go kart idea doesn't really work. Yeah, but it's fun to imagine. It kind of is. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna dispute that. All right. Wind in your hair. Yeah. Just like, all right, that guy cut me off. Oh, I'm gonna get him. Right. I, I mean, if you get close enough, you can just punch now. In now the face. traffic <laughs> is fun. You can't wait to get out of work and go get caught in traffic. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. You've got a full tank of gas. You're going a full lap around 285. You're gonna cream some people. <laughs> Like, I'm then, spinning that guy out like Donkey Kong. Then you got the problem of go-karts only hold one or two people. 
So, like, what about people who have, like, a bunch of kids? I mean, most of the SUVs buses? that I see on the streets are only holding one or two people. Yeah, most. Not all. <laughs> not all. In, in fact, not even most. Well, see, that's that's the second part of his solution. You're not going to be able to fit as many people in, mm-hmm. so people will naturally have less children, right? Oh, wow. And, and that's <laughs> that's that. Boom. More uh, more economy to go around. More. <laughs> More economy for everyone. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it would work. Good plan. No. <laughs> it would work. Yeah. I mean, think of all the other We've crazy already said systems. how it won't, but yeah, cool. <laughs> all right. Think of it. Hey, let's just I ag- did. Let's just agree to disagree. <laughs> sure. All right. Yeah. I agree you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> so what about any what 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 do you think, Dave? What are some other good solutions for uh for alleviating the traffic that we all deal with here in the greater Flying Atlanta cars. area? Flying cars? Flying cars, like fifth element style flying cars. And okay. you have multiple levels of traffic. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Or I guess they didn't, what, Back to the Future 2? Yep, they sure did. In fact, it was Back to the Future 2. Can we go yeah. back to my go-kart idea real quick no. and talk about how stupid that is, and then we moved on to flying cars? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's yeah, go. we're talking right. plausible solutions. <laughs> right, no, this well, is more plausible. You're right. You're right. Continue. I just wanted to asterisk that. <laughs> <laughs> so so now we're we're flying. Got yeah, it. cars are flying. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, there'd be some kind of restrictions in place to keep them from just going off wherever they want. Like it's not like you're flying a plane; you're flying a car. You have to still maintain lanes of traffic and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I don't know how to do it. I'm not a scientist. Right. I feel like in the Fifth Element and stuff, they had like floating lights. Yeah, there were like guide lights that were basically like, "This is a lane. Stay between the guide lights." Kind of like a feasible. Star Fox or something like that, where you're in, you know, the tutorial program yeah. where you have to like prove yeah. that you can even play this game to continue <laughs> further. Speaking of Star Fox, Star Fox Two mm-hmm. is coming out. Oh really? Yeah. Star it's Fox crazy. Two. Two, which never came out before. What system is it coming out on? Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's right. They they're are re- they're, they're re-releasing Super, Super Nintendo, Nintendo with Star Fox 2, which was under production but never actually got made. And so now they're actually putting it out. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh right now there's a lot of hype going around around Nintendo. Yeah. People are excited about Nintendo again because they're being pretty smart like releasing these retro consoles. Mm-hmm. It regenerating some more revenue and apparently they can't keep the Switch on the shelves. Yeah. They just can't keep up with the demand. And they're doing it smart with logistics with, like, these limited releases to basically, like, continue to keep track of the demand without flooding well, a market. Right. The they're they're going to get diehard that, fans first, and then as they release more games that people are going to get excited about that's going to, you know, spur them to go and buy that system, by that time, in theory, they should have the system in stock. The problem with those limited releases, though, is you have scalpers who are dicks, mm-hmm. and they'll just buy them up on the pre-release. And then sell them for an exorbitant markup on on eBay and what have you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well. So don't some people them. make some people make a living that way. Yeah. Some people make a living on other people's impatience. That's pure mercantilism. I can't really get upset by that. You know. I mean, there should there's supposed to be rules that you can only buy like two or three at a time, right? Yeah. Like, well, they they definitely work their way around those. I mean, the same thing happens whenever the new iPhone comes out mm-hmm. or whenever there's anything where the company can't meet the demand. New gaming consoles, yeah. especially around holiday season, they'll buy them all up, and then they'll sell them for a huge price because they just know that little Timmy is not going to not get his new Xbox One, other whatever letter they want to <laughs> add to that name. Mm. Well, that's 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 a shame. It is, except for you know, the guy who's smart enough to buy them all up and sell them at a much higher price. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a shame. No that, compass. It's a shame that little Timmy is so damn dependent <laughs> on that. It's so for, spoiled rotten on that for enjoyment, and that his parents are just gonna feed that. Yeah. By by paying three time markup value. But like, how much is this when it normally comes out? Three hundred fifty dollars. Well, I can't find any. Nine hundred seems reasonable. And it happens all the time. All the time. Yeah. 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 It's crying shame. You ever dealt with a scalper before, like for tickets or anything? No. Nope, never have. I did it once. Yeah, never going back? No, fuck no. Nope. Uh, the problem with, like, I, me, and, me and a buddy went down to uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay. To go see Less Than Jake play. Okay. Um, And I was under the impression he'd already bought the tickets. He did. This is in 2001. I thought he'd already bought the tickets. He didn't. 
we get down there, they're sold out. And so we're like, what are we going to do? Like, we drove all the way down here to see this show. Yeah. I mean, this is less than Jake in 2001. Yeah. Of course it was sold out. At, at their prime. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Shine down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we ended up talking to the scalper, and he was like, well, it's this much. And it was like twice the, the going price. And we're like, well, that's that's sucks. And he's like, that's what it is. Yeah. And it's going to go <laughs> yep. up once the show starts. I'm like, that's stupid. Why would I pay more to see less show? But he's like, well, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> and so we, we, we <laughs> talking, to these, talking to these other kids suck on who it. also <laughs> didn't have tickets. They're like, would you give us a deal if, like, we all buy these tickets? And he's like, no. Like, well, there's that cop over there. He's like, I don't give a shit. Like, Damn, this man doesn't give a shit. Okay. Well, you're not getting in the show if you get the cop over here. Yeah. So we bought the tickets from him. We got yep. the show. He, he had your you proverbial nuts tickets. and advice. Yeah. He knew you were going to buy them tickets. Yeah. I did. Y'all wouldn't have approached him if y'all weren't just itching. Like, oh, I can see it. They drove all the way out here. They ain't got <laughs> shit. I can see the desperation in your eyes. Yeah. You know, go get that cop. I know him. His name's Jerry. Bring him over <laughs> here. Yep. Hey, Jerry, what's up, man? Like, <laughs> hey, how's it going? This is me with more your tickets? nuts in my vice. <laughs> you know you're not supposed to do that. I know. You're still off duty working the, working the crowds, right? Like, <laughs> yep, yep. Like, not going to arrest me, are you? No. <laughs> like, all right, Jerry. Have a good night. Well, I'm going to go enjoy the show. That's pretty much exactly how it went, yeah. except he didn't talk to the cop. No. Jerry never actually came over. <laughs> no, no. Called your bluff. Well, yeah, go get Jerry. <laughs> yep. Jerry was being a pussy. He didn't He didn't want to get into a, an altercation. He wanted to enjoy the show. Yeah. I think. Do you know who Jerry is in this scenario? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, is Jerry was right there. He had to have seen this going down. Right. He didn't do anything about it. No. no. They don't. Right. Because they're not they're not there in in an official official capacity. Well, official enough. I mean, you can do a citizen's arrest. I'm pretty sure an off duty cop can arrest somebody. Can you do a citizen's arrest? You can try. Or is that just something that they had on police academy? Police academy. I mean, they definitely <laughs> had it on police academy, and you know that's good enough for me. Yeah. I, I mean, when we're talking about up. plausibility, they can't make a movie without being factual, yeah. right? No, I mean, yeah, if you were like, I'm going to go citizens arrest this guy, <laughs> I would have your back. But I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure there's something about, I don't think you can just be like, I saw you do something illegal. Get the fuck down on the ground. Like, I don't think it works like that. Are you looking it up? All right. Uh, a citizen's arrest is an arrest made by a person who is not acting as a sworn law f- law enforcement official. In right, common citizen. law jurisdictions, the practice dates back to medieval England and the English common law, in which sheriffs encouraged ordinary citizens to help apprehend lawbreakers. And they don't do that so much anymore. I mean, every I mean, now and then they'll be like, if you spot this guy, give us a call and we'll give you a reward. Yeah. Don't but, try to approach him. He will shoot you in the face. Yeah, but there's very rarely are they like, you should make a citizen's arrest <laughs> because, you know, we don't really want to do it. Like, go ahead and have him in cuffs when we get there. It'll be great. <laughs> just save us a little bit of trouble, if you don't mind. Because I just feel like if you got shot and then they arrived on scene and they were like, yeah, he was trying to handcuff me. I don't know what <laughs> his plans were. And that's it. You're dead. What's your argument? Yep. He, he murdered me. <laughs> this guy murdered me. Quit <laughs> moving his jaw like that, <laughs> Lieutenant. All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> common law, United States. Most states have codified the common law rule that a warrantless arrest may be made by a private citizen for a felony, misdemeanor, or a breach of peace. A breach of peace covers a multitude of violations in which the Supreme Court has even included a misdemeanor seatbelt violation punishable only by a fine. The term... Historically included theft, night walking, prostitution, and playing card and dice games. So, so I can insist not a police for, academy thing for not wearing a seatbelt. Apparently, yeah. Now, so if how, you ride with me and you don't put on that seatbelt, I can arrest you. All right, I'm placing you under citizen's arrest. So what is what is the exact? Is there like a a specific? Sin, like how did you go what's about? What's the protocol? Yeah, to what's, it? Thank you for the word. <laughs> all right, all right. So here, floundering. here is a. A good example, this is the California Penal Code, Section 837. (laughs) Really? A private person may arrest another, one, for a public offense committed or attempted in his or her presence, two, when the person arrested has committed a felony, although not in his presence, 
three, when a felony has been in fact committed and he or she has reasonable cause for believing the person arrested to have committed it. So I just need to believe they did it. Now, I'm pretty sure that you're going to have a lot of uh, responsibility in this trial that's <laughs> yeah. coming up for this person. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, in theory, it seems, at least in California... You can say, stop, I'm tying you up right now. You're under citizen's <laughs> I arrest. I just don't <laughs> feel like there's there's something off about that whole scenario. But well, now that wonder, it's out there, there you have now it. That, how often does it happen? How often are citizen's arrests happening? Are they happening? Do, do, is that still a thing? Like, Apparently it's still legal. Yeah, what was the very last citizen's arrest made in the United States? It was probably like last week at some damn... <laughs> rally some, some political pe- rally yeah, some like, political yeah. rally where somebody pulled a gun and they were just like nope i got a bigger one that's not a gun <laughs> citizens arrest it's like the american crocodile dundee <laughs> where they just keep pulling out bigger guns yeah. everybody at a republican rally what you got anything nothing it's not, it's not giving me any numbers hmm. yeah that's disappointing i am i've been let down by the internet Thanks, Internet. Yeah. Okay. I'd say we just unplug it. <laughs> and if you guys were interested, I do have uh, Georgia's uh, Rules of Lawful Citizens Arrest. Dave, I think I'm going to send this link to you so you can put it up on the site. Okay. Just because it seems it seems like an interesting thing for our, our listeners to know. So just, they can stop. Just the Georgia laws. Yeah, this is just the Georgia. Right. How does it work here in Georgia? <laughs> And so if you're in a state that's near Georgia, you can just assume that your laws are similar. Right. Is it, like, from reading it or glossing over, is it different than California's was when you just mentioned Not, it? not much different. There okay. are a few little additions. Like You're allowed you're, to put your knee on the back of their you neck. You are not allowed to use uh, <laughs> excessive or unreasonable force. Yeah. In Georgia. But in California, totally fine. Correct. <laughs> at least based on just that small piece of codified <laughs> law that they showed me yeah, in, in, on Wikipedia. In California, all I need is, like, suspicion. <laughs> hey, I was, ha-ha, I robbed that bank yesterday. Ha-ha, did you see it on the news? Get it down the ground. Me. Like, oh, he admitted it. <laughs> Get down. Were you digging in my trash? That's theft. Get on the ground. I'm placing you under citizen's arrest. Well, actually, according to that. Green versus the state of California, once you put your garbage out on the curb, it is no longer your property. But what if it's still right next to my house? Uh, then it's your property. Right. I never said it was on the curb. Well, I did. Yeah, just now. All right. How do you know that court case? Like, why do you know that specific court case? What do you mean? Why well, don't? What are you talking about? What are you, it's one of his made-up statistics. <laughs> everybody, knows, <laughs> everybody knows Green versus the state of California. Uh, yeah, that's it's, it's when they started allowing people, the government, to dig through your garbage to find evidence against you. Uh, and you know, if you have stuff in your garbage that you don't want the government to find, like remnants of clothing or but fingernails or whatever. <laughs> they are allowed to go to the local landfill where your garbage was dumped and sort through it there. I mean, they can, yeah. but they don't need to because of the court case Green versus the state of California. They can just get it right off the curb as soon as you put it out. Yep. And that would save them a lot of time and effort. Yep. Yeah. They don't a have lot to, easier right yeah. there at the curb with that one bag. Right. You don't have to dig through all the neighbor's stuff as well. Gross. Yep. Well, that's interesting. So, you know. That's something I learned today. Put your toenail clippings in your neighbor's garbage. (laughs) Smart. (laughs) This guy's got ideas. Listen up. You're not necessarily good ones, but. They're ideas, all right. It's important to know how to, you know. There's a very, there's a structure, right? There's a system Mm -hmm. that governs the world. And those that break that system and are smart enough to get away with it, Mm -hmm. they rise to the top. They're like the rich people and like the leaders of of this free world of ours. And so like, I strive to model myself after those folks. Okay. Like even though I'm poor and I have no credibility, (laughs) like I still like to act as though I am super elite. Right. And it seems to work. Yeah, you definitely have the douchebag personality going. Right. On, so, yeah. You just carry it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, 
Like, I don't know who this guy is, but it seems as though he thinks he's someone. He, he <laughs> smells entitled. <laughs> like, there's just a stink of, like... He sure acts like I should care who he is. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. Presence. It's very important. Yeah, to getting away thing. with being a you know a con artist. That's how you got in, into a Adult Swim, right? It, <laughs> right? I mean, not far, but it's how <laughs> I got as far as I did. Yeah. You could have gotten, you know, further mm -hmm. if you had any credibility. That's yeah. the part that you or need. You or had down a security officer. or had run because <laughs> yep. I bet I could outrun the security yep. guard. More balls or credibility? One of those two yep. would have gotten you further into Adult Swim. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's a good chance that there was like. Those doors weren't going to open for me. <laughs> They're <that>. probably not. <laughs> That's right. why I'm elbow slice security, security guard and then taking, taking his, his ID stuff. card. Yeah. Mm. Well, next time, right? Best laid sure. plans of George Steinbeck. So, what are you doing for? Um, I don't know, the weekend. <laughs> Independence any... Day is coming yeah, up that's, soon. Yeah, that's what I was, uh, I was I'll like. You mean working. the 4th of July? <laughs> yeah. that's. I will likely be working at day job, which I plan to quit soon. Oh, oh yeah? I'm very excited about. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got something else lined up? Nope. Are no? They, are they doing a fireworks <laughs> show in your in your town? I don't know. No. Oh. I have no idea. I honestly don't know. Oh. I used to go uh, hang out with some friends and, and their families uh every every fourth july they they would like actually do a big barbecue like they'd smoke meat for like oh, wow. all get... day and then and then we'd have like a big dinner and then we'd go see the fireworks and it was awesome and i haven't gotten to do that in the past few years because i've been working every every holiday now yep but, everyone right there with you but yeah it's uh it was a lot of fun I'm, i really miss it. i miss them maybe they watch i don't know hey huh <laughs> <laughs> what about you jason you got any uh fourth of july plans uh, I am going to be back in Charleston this weekend. Nice. Uh, hitting the beach again, uh, trying to put one more shade of not quite powder pale <laughs> okay. on my shoulders. Um, You'll need to get probably be soon. heading back on Tuesday. I think Tuesday is the actual 4th of July, right? It is indeed, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll hopefully... Well, in I'll, that case, I won't be working if that's 4th of July. I don't work Tuesdays. Is. Oh, right. well, then there you go. We usually do this on Tuesdays. Usually, yeah. yeah. And I'm hoping that I can get back in time to, to get up here and, and do Talkie Box. Okay. Oh, you better hope so. Well, <laughs> I'll do what I can. Uh, All right. Well, well that's see. good. That's good. Yeah. But I don't know if there's going to be any fireworks shows up there. It'd be really cool because I've never seen a fireworks show over the ocean. And I, I bet they do do it. I don't know. It, <laughs> you that's said so, doo doo. Yeah, I sure did. I would. Uh, I would really like to see it though, right? With the like the reflection oh, of yeah. the. No, yep. I haven't gotten to see it over the ocean. I got to see. I was in Chattanooga uh, many years ago for this festival they have called Riverbend. It's like a, a week long thing where they have like a lot of bands come and you know all kinds of stuff going on. Stick or not sticks. Uh, Starship played when I was there, and Collective Soul both played the year I was there. But they, they do fireworks off of a bridge over the Tennessee River. And so you get to see that, that cool reflection. They And they have, like, really cool fireworks that, like, make a waterfall that come off the bridge down into the water and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. To really play to the reflection. It really does, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good that they had the foresight to think. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for good fireworks artists. Yeah. I've seen some shows that were just like, uh, yeah, it's yeah. fireworks. I mean, you can't not enjoy fireworks i think unless yeah. you're like a scared dog but <laughs> yeah. definitely more enjoyable being present for the fireworks but the best shows always seem to be elsewhere right far far away from where you are apparently a year or two before i went to to tennessee for that riverbend thing they used to they used to do the fireworks off of barges on the river but then one year uh it rained kind of earlier on and some of the moisture got into the fireworks and caused one of the uh the big the big mortar tubes to like the they have like these paper seals on them mm -hmm. and the paper didn't didn't come off and so it ended up knocking the mortar over and shooting off into the rest of the fireworks and set the boat on fire so they don't do it on the barges anymore man that seems so unwise yeah <laughs> like they should definitely keep doing it on the barges yeah i mean um, think about how many people are coming back next year mm -hmm. to catch a show like that <laughs> 
Like, oh man, it's the best thing I've seen. Yeah, <laughs> this is the awesome exploding barge. But like, I can't believe they did this. How did they fit that in the budget? This is <laughs> amazing. I mean, I'm honestly surprised that they just don't have some kind of a suppressive system rigged up that just like hovers right next to all your your firework alley. Just hovers next to it. Well, you know, I mean, you, like you set it up so that it's basically like, yeah. if anything were to get crazy, you just like. Bam, bam, and it's like a hundred fire extinguishers just get the ripcord plugged at once. I'm sure there's some real, like the really, really big, like, like legit- Disney places yeah, that do fireworks they have like stuff every like damn that day. Going on. They probably yeah. got stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But when they're like doing an impromptu sort on of like. On the Tennessee River. <laughs> they're like, all right, well, you put that mortar there. There was a volunteer and then that fire mortar goes display. There. Anyway. They're like, do we have one fire marshal on board? Perfect. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he caught on fire. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I like I the Tennessee know. River accent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little Savannah River, but... Whatever. You know, who am I to judge? Exactly. I I did an office look oh. to the camera. Oh, did you? Yeah. Do you think it played? <laughs> it always plays. Mm. Do you watch our episodes? No. <laughs> do you watch our episodes? I do. Everyone? Ah, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> like the last 10 at least... That's good. Good for you. Good, good for, for you. you. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Uh, he was nailing Christoph Waltz earlier. That was Christopher Walken. Uh, yeah. But I know you knew Christoph Waltz. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're good friends. <laughs> really good friends, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Christoph. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's just something about that smooth, diabolical voice. Mm-hmm. You know. He's what Austrian. Uh, he's German. Is he straight German? He is German. All right. Then. Yep. But I was not aware. No. I don't know him as well as you do. But apparently, I mean, Mm-mm. get to know him. He's delightful. Uh, it's mm. it's more about the pacing. I yeah. feel like he has like like a Christopher. He's like the German Christopher Walken. The German Christopher Walken. <laughs> Even though I think Christopher Walken is in fact probably also German in in uh, heritage. In heritage. Yeah. I think he's. More on the uh, Italian side? You think so? I think Italian, Sicilian, somewhere around I know there. there was a movie. But I'm not an expert. I know there was a movie, a couple of movies, actually, where he's played Italian-style crime bosses. Uh, Suicide Kings. Mm-hmm. Um, and another one that I had a second ago and just <laughs> derped it. Derp, Wh- derp. Who's the... Uh... Was he in True Romance? That's it. He was. That, yeah. I was he like, was uh, it's like a True pink romance. Cadillac or something. I can't <laughs> fucking remember. Yeah. True Romance. One of, the, one of those movies that most people don't realize that Tarantino did. But it was, it was fantastic. It was really good. Oh, I, I really like the, the uh, May He Rest in Peace, the Gandolfini uh, mm-hmm. fight scene where it's him and that, that lady or whatever. And they're just. I was wrong. Scottish German. Getting crazy. Scottish German? Scottish German. German. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I just, I know a lot about surnames. He's a, he's a Mick, Mick Schnitzel? Yep. <laughs> Max Schnitzel, sorry. Right. <laughs> Good. See, it was racist until then. <laughs> yeah. I don't Nailed think it's racist it. to that point. No? Yeah. So, Scottish I mean, and German, not racist. Right? Because they're, they're all, you know, whites. Yeah. Right? And you're white. Yeah. Not really. yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you get to like forty percent Portuguese, mm-hmm. you know, like, I mean, the language. Right now, you said you were at ten percent. You <laughs> only know around there. Yeah, you've only finished ten percent <laughs> of your Portuguese lesson. Yeah, and I, I'm guessing you probably haven't done any of it since last week when we discussed it. No, I do it every day. Every day. Huh? So Good then you're at like you. what? Good 11, for you. Twelve percent then now. Mm, somewhere around there, probably. Does it actually gauge as you're it does doing on? The, on the particular phone I'm doing it on, it doesn't. Apparently, if I did it on like a, a, a PC, maybe it might do it on PC. But apparently, uh, a friend of mine does it on his uh, what's the word? Android phone, and hey, it, it up, uh, updates you on there. But on on the iPhone that I shoot the show with, then do it. So like, you get to a hundred percent whether you know Portuguese or not. <laughs> like, it's like you are now Done fluent. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. But it has it breaks it down in all these little different sections. There's like a section about animals, a section about like prepositions. There's you know all this stuff. So once I get to the bottom of the list, I guess I'll be at a hundred. But mm. you'll know the whole language, the whole thing. 
Now you good you for you. And we'll just do the entire show in Portuguese. I know you are a big fan of boating. We'll do a yeah. third of the show in Portuguese. The no, whole thing. And you guys gotta learn it too. That's probably genetic. It could be, right? Because what else do the Portuguese do? Uh, apparently, they're they're artisans. <laughs> like, uh, they also started the slave trade. <laughs> yeah, we can't really. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? That wasn't me. That wasn't you. Yeah. Or my dad. Or his dad. Ish. They knew about it. They knew a guy. Dave, I we have all bad knew news. about it. <laughs> You're either white or Portuguese. And either one's not looking good. I'm also partially American Indian. Yeah, me me too. Nobody counts that anymore. <laughs> oh. It's, it's true. I think you have to be like at least one eighth Native to American one eighth, to yeah. count it. Because otherwise we're just still like making fun of them, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm at I mean, one sixteenth is I think where where because we am. all we all know what horrible atrocious mm-hmm. things yeah. that America did to the native population. Like, yeah. There's no getting around it. There's no arguing with like, oh well, it wasn't so bad. No, it was fucked up. It was bad. It was, it was bad. Uh, it everything was bad. about bad. it was messed up. Like yeah. we wronged those people. Mm-hmm. And so to be like, no, I've got Native American heritage, and you're like one one hundred right. Cherokee, and it was probably. From rape <laughs> you know like yeah and it just got heavy hey i'm sorry i get dark sometimes the truth is out it's there. legit though like you're yep. you're right like and so like it's it's kind of like a man you're you're not there's like actually people on reservations still mm. that yes. are like claiming or trying you know clinging is clinging to the their heritage that is slowly dying off right and so it's kind of snarky to be like Oh no, I'm I'm this kind of Indian when you really most people have no idea. I've had so many people tell me, you know, like, "Oh, I'm part Cherokee." Like, "Oh, well, what do you know about the Cherokee tribe?" And uh, unless it's like where the casinos are or something, <laughs> they have no clue. Right. And that, you know, that, that bothers me. Why are you going to talk about it if you don't I, know I, anything I at about least, it? I at least I at least know all the tribes that were involved, but tribes I do have, but I mean, yes. I but have you ever researched like? I, I, we, I did a little uh, ancestry research when I was in high school, and that's when I was able to figure out that I was 116th and learn all the tribes and stuff like that, but I didn't get too deep into the research on the individual tribes. All I know is it's Blackfoot, Cherokee, Ottawa, and Miami. Wow. That's all I know. <laughs> don't ask That's me more to than tell most, you, though. Don't ask me to tell you what the Miami like, Indians did. I haven't actually done the research on my. All I know is that my grandfather had told me, like, "Yeah, we're part Cherokee." I was like, "Oh, part Cherokee, cool." Yep. I would like to. I, I've I've thought about getting on that what like ancestry dot com or family tree. Or yeah, something they, like that. Not a sponsor. Happened. Yeah, and <laughs> and and seeing all those things. The 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 most that I found out is a cousin of mine found out that uh our like my mom's family came from Jamestown, like part of like new john smith and all that stuff yeah but that that's the pocahontas most one and two yeah okay yeah pocahontas you know 3.5 yeah just around the river bend <laughs> go on colors of the wind <laughs> <laughs> i have nothing to add <laughs> but yeah uh i don't know where we were actually talking before about this Oh, I don't know. I was just talking about what grinds my gears or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there was, you know. We seem to have gotten off on a tangent. Yeah. yeah. Just, some was, people say a some, tangent of a tangent. Some yep. people say some stuff and they don't know anything about it. And I just wish that they would, you know, take wish the they would know about it. To yeah. know about it. That's yeah. all. I get it. Just like there are shitty drivers out there, and they should take some time to to not be shitty to learn to be better. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I know I have some Irish heritage. Like I've actually done some research on not only the Native American heritage mm-hmm. that I have, but on the Irish heritage that I have. And, yeah, it's, I think Did you learn it's anything important. really cool? Like, I mean, well, did you know mainly the, the most important thing, I think, to take from Irish uh, history is, uh, you know, agricultural diversity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the biggest thing I think, because that potato famine was real messed up. Like we didn't we didn't think that through as a people. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, that fungus came over from South America and just 
wiped out the entire island's crop and we went from like almost you know like we're we're going to beat England in population and and like surging of like manpower and whatnot. Oh, potato famine? No, everybody abandoned ship. <laughs> like yep. just a few years went by and people were like screw it. There's nothing but dead soil. We yeah. got to get out of here. And it was awful. Yeah. Cuz they the because of their potato boom you know, getting all those, the, the South American potato crop in and like really planting the crap out of it. They were, they had more food than they knew what to do with. Yeah. Like anybody, you could just, you know, they were just, surplus. yeah. If, right. if you were going hungry, it's cause you wanted to. And then all of a sudden the food was all gone, but the population was still yeah, just exploding. And, <laughs> and that's, and now you got gangs in New York. <laughs> right? That's a great movie. Great movie. Never seen it. What? Oh, it's fun. I love seeing y'all's faces when I tell you I haven't seen something. What are yeah. you doing with your life? Huh? You, were, you were here all day. <laughs> you did not leave and this you, house. You told no, yourself. You're right. I was, right. I was doing York. other work for this show. <laughs> oh. oh. I did finish Sense8 today. Well, yeah. I still yeah. haven't watched it. No, that's all right. I'm just saying, Daniel Day Lewis is a personal hero of mine, and I would really suggest. That you watch everything he's ever done. Everything? Everything. All of Even it. Even that really shitty movie you did? Yep. Whichever one you're talking about. Yeah, you totally. Was it, <laughs> Dan, I was like, are you talking about the same Daniel Day Lewis? <laughs> you must know a guy from down the street, like a old old Daniel Day from the block. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's not my yeah, Daniel Yeah, from the Day. block. That's his last name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the family. Yeah. All right. From the blocks. Yeah. yeah. Well, good deal. <laughs> We're familiar with them. Hey, what's our time at? 13, 13 minutes, minutes left in the show. Thank you, Tony. 13 that was, minutes. That was Tony, everybody. Yep. I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> I don't know. We finally if y'all got heard him to talk. It. But he, he mentioned 13 minutes. Uh, I think Tony is uh, from Iceland or something. I think his people are. I'm Icelandic? Sure. <laughs> Tony. What's that from? I think that's. That's like Greenland or Iceland, one of those. Yeah, something yeah. weird. Yeah, one of those land countries. Finland, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> Good. Uh, You've established that. Yeah. So, uh, what'd you say? Portugal? Not, not like Roger. No. no. Roger, we've, we haven't established <laughs> shit for Roger. And this, this dude said four tribes. I don't know if you heard him when he was naming mm-hmm. off the, the different tribes he's akin to. Oh, yeah, I heard it. But he's, you said 116th? One sixteen, and that's from four different tribes. So yep. that's like, that's like I've one, got one sixty fourth of each one of those tribes. Of each one. Of, all <laughs> yes. right, you've already done this math. I, I have, yeah. <laughs> all right. Good deal. And they're from all over. I mean, like, and that's assuming Miami, that they're all. I don't know if you're familiar with where Miami is. Yeah, on Florida. Yeah, or where Ottawa is. <laughs> or where Ottawa is. <laughs> yep. But they, they aren't close. That's stretched no. out, yo. Yep. Mm. You running that whole East Coast. They, yep. Maybe they were pen pals. Maybe that's how that. That's that probably. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they probably knew your your John Smith people <laughs> caught up in the middle. I'm sorry. Yep. We're sorry. <laughs> no. All them Portuguese. Yeah. All them damn Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the Portuguese. That was my dad's side was the Portuguese. My mom's side was, was Jamestown. Yeah. Damn Portuguese. Thanks. We why. love you, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, why sport. you gotta be hating on the Portuguese? I'm not hating on I the mean, Portuguese. as far as I'm aware, the only thing negative I know about them is the whole we started the slave trade thing. <laughs> and only because Dave just mentioned just, it. A few and only the Atlantic on the one. Okay. Yeah. Just the Atlantic slave trade. Because there were definitely slaves before oh, yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, I think they've been around for a long time. I'm pretty sure since like there were people. Mm. Like, I think since Like almost ever? I'm pretty well, not almost, because there was a time when like dinosaurs ruled the earth. They had slaves. Do you think so? Absolutely. Oh, my my world is expanding <laughs> right yep. now yeah. as I consider dinosaurs being in like indebted to one another. <laughs> like I own you. Like all right. Yeah, what it didn't sound like that. It was. You want, like, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. I mean, but they understood in, each other the same way. Indentured dinosaurs. That's yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, like, oh, you can't, you can kill me, like but cartoon. you can't, <laughs> you can't get the You fruit. scratch my back, I don't eat you. That, yeah. Or get the fruit out of the tall tree. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah. Whatever. Pick all this stuff that's going to give me gum disease out. Land before <laughs> time. Yeah. You've seen it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You've seen it. Oh, absolutely. Who's your favorite character? Ducky. Ducky, huh? Yeah. Ducky's a good one. Did you have a favorite that wasn't? I good? mean, I, I, I don't know. I of course liked uh, Littlefoot, mm. but I think I, I'd have to go with Petrie. Petrie's good. Yep, I liked I liked the whole flight thing. Yeah, uh, Ducky was the cutest. Yeah. by mm-hmm. far. Um, yep, but, yep, yep, but, yep, yep. <laughs> but still, like, I felt like he was just riding his luck. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't really a go getter. He wasn't a decision maker. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I liked Petrie for the uh, for the comic aspect, but mm-hmm. really my favorite is Sarah. Yeah, yeah. she's she's a Sarah, take charge, Sarah no the, nonsense the type of dinosaur. The bitchy triceratops. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. She's no nonsense. Like just because she was sort of against, like kind of like a, an antagonist, might you know, for a yeah. little while. Like I really feel like. She was an integral part of mm-hmm. that journey. You know, they made like seventeen of those movies. Oh, you are you using going? hyperbole? Only slightly. <laughs> like, yeah. it's somewhere. It's somewhere in the mid to high teens. Yeah. Is it really? It, I'm not. Okay. I'm not I was thinking oh, yeah. like maybe five or six. I remember. I, I know it got to at least thirteen. Yeah. Like they went on for a while. There. That's almost like a series. That's a cartoon series. Like yeah. they could it's be. It's exactly like a series. Yeah, because there's <laughs> multiples of them. Right? Yeah. Are they in a series? Right. Yep. Are they independent of each other? Can I you mean, watch one and not need to watch the one before it or the one after it? You probably could. It probably kind of establishes you're, the character. Yeah, before, you're not going to have the same information on the characters, I don't think. I only watched up to, like, I think six or seven as a kid. I think I watched up to the third one. Yeah, well, I I'm mean, younger. does it, like, is it become like the Lord of the Rings where you're getting pieces of one long journey? No, there are standout, standout adventures. Yeah. Okay, then that's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everything about did it. Did you ever, did you guys hear about like the the tragedy behind the girl that played Ducky though? No. So the Ducky was played by a little girl, mm-hmm. and she was also in. I think I do know this. I think I do I know this. It's I don't know if she back. did any other thing because like her like her parents took all her money, all the money she made, mm-hmm. which happens with kids actors a lot. But then her father uh, killed her mm-hmm. and himself. I think it was actually the same girl yeah. who did uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven, because I think I read something about that. Like, it might have been. I don't know. All Dogs Go to Heaven in the Land Before Time, and she didn't live to hmm. to see either one of those movies. Yeah, it was, it was some really tragic shit. Yeah. It's pretty tragic. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's really messed up. Yeah. I but wish All Dogs Go to Heaven, Someone had, had noticed something and intervened before something like that happened. I. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but citizens arrest. <laughs> citizens <laughs> arrest. Are completely acceptable. Yeah. Like if you see some weird shit going down that you're uncomfortable with, like, arrest someone. Oh, know the law. It doesn't even matter who. And there's a solution to your traffic problem. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but I'm gonna need some way of pulling people. I don't think I can do <laughs> that legally. I don't think you can. You, you definitely can't <laughs> pretend to be a cop. <laughs> I know pretending to be a cop is right you know, off you just the gotta, books. You just got to wave them over. Like, you can't, there are no lights or anything. You just like. Ooh, I wonder if I could just, like, pull a $100 bill, <laughs> like, out of my wallet, right? And, and be it, like, hey, hey, man, this, hey, you, look you at this. That money? And they'll be like, is he trying, did I, did that fly out of my car? <laughs> like, because you know people are stupid, yeah. right? They're going to, they're going to That gonna was like, probably mine, right? Is, there, yeah. is he trying to give that to me? And then, so, See, I'm going to be like, we're going seven miles over the speed limit. My, my <laughs> Get sister, on the ground. My sister watches way too much Discovery ID, so if I saw somebody waving me down with a $100, I'm like, that person is luring me in to murder me. Yep. I'm going to keep driving. Yep. He's I'm going to murder me. for a hundy. <laughs> no. Nope. That You're going to cool kill for calling it a hundy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it sounds like you're just mispronouncing car names. <laughs> You uh, you get that Hyundai Civic? Ooh wee! <laughs> you got that Hyundai Elantra? Yeah. Yeah, we got it yeah. after Civic. Good. I think. Good. Ooh, made the point. I'm, yep. I'm impressed that you were able to use two different car companies for that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hence the basis for the joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is delightful. Uh, <laughs> we're we're awesome. Yep. <laughs> we're just r- running out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think that was evidenced immediately when Jason's like, how much time do we have? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> there was a 13 minutes? Oh, damn. Oh, okay. okay, so okay. all right, all right. that work. We had four time. Well, we usually don't have someone on boards, right? We so That's we true. usually turn the monitor. Yeah. And then just every now and then, because, you know, I've been, it's been sneaking up on me a lot yeah, yeah. here lately. Yes. And so I wanted to try and be a little more aware so that I don't get like caught up in something. Right. And then you'd be like, well, I need you to save everything that you're thinking and saying. What did you learn? And I'll be like, I learned that I should have <laughs> thought and said this shit about 15 minutes ago. Yeah. You don't get to use that this, this Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to come up with another <laughs> thing to learn. All right. Give me some good information to use in, in a few moments. You're oh, on awesome. the spot. While so, you're thinking about it. So <laughs> citizens arrests. Okay. We'll go back. Yeah. You got some more? Nope. <laughs> All right. I was hoping you would just take it and run. Now, um. Three. How about a reality show called Citizens Arrest? That sounds great. Where where you just you basically just go around <laughs> and you like ticket people mm -hmm. uh, on camera for being just dicks. <laughs> like if if you see them, you didn't hold the door for that person, right? Like yeah. anything, anything yeah. that's just rude, and and you don't actually you know you're not actually arresting people because right. you don't want to get. You don't want it to become violent yeah. or whatever. But I mean, but do you think if you just like charge them fees, so you wouldn't turn them over to the? No, wait, that's blackmail. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's not allowed. No, you can't You'll get do that. Right. Arrested for that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's blackmail. All right, moving on. So <laughs> I yeah, think I might yeah, use that. You just, you know, any any time you you notice, like yeah. you just keep a ticket book in your pocket. You just pull it out. You write somebody a ticket. Mm -hmm. You know, and you yeah. tear it off, hand it to them, like, there you go. Uh, for example, we were at the gas station earlier. Uh-huh. Right? Yep. And uh, you made fun of me. Right, because you were a dick. Well, <laughs> exactly. I should have given you a ticket. You could have given what, me a ticket. And the do? watermark on my ticket pad would just say you're a dick, and then I would fill in the circumstances. So what What? What was the circumstance? So uh, Jason was buying not one but two uh, uh Energy drinks, uh -huh. and uh, he walked up to the counter. There was nobody else at the counter in his defense. Uh, the the guy rang him up, told him what his total would be, and Jason dug into his pocket, pulled out a handful of coins, mm. and began sorting through the coins in hand and slowly placing them on the counter until he had reached the total. <laughs> and I... I made a show about it. Like, he I made a, meal made a show. It. He yeah. really, really did. I and could tell got... that the kid was like, oh, come on. And so I, just, <laughs> I, I saw like, his face. His, do, do, his do, face do. was looking at him like, like it was just, I can't believe this guy right now. Yeah. Are you kidding me? He could have taken out the change and kind of like sorted some things out. You, you know, at least got the quarters and the dimes separated first. Right. He waited until he heard the total. And then reached into his pocket like he didn't know that's what he was going to pay yeah, with. As <laughs> though two do you know, two for four dollars isn't the norm. Yeah. You know, so Oh, let me see here. Is this oh, that's a Chuck E. Cheese token. Now would you like All right, to know this is a quarter. Why? I went up there and I put on a show for this kid. Besides yeah. my regular I just like to perform for right. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's what's up? I walked up to this counter and his buddy was buying some stuff. I guess they went to high school together or whatever, but some friend of his was at the counter. And I walk up just in time to hear the last bit of their conversation before they're like, oh, someone's listening and they break it apart. Yeah. And he says, oh, man, what about Dirk? Right? And the name itself just sets me off. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. what about Dirk? Like, tell me, please, about Dirk. And the kid behind the counter says, oh, no, he's always trying to control me and manhandle me. And and then I like sort of was like, I'm amongst you. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what we're talking about, but it's getting, let my presence be known. It's getting weird. And so <laughs> like they just look at me like I interrupted yeah. their conversation about Dirk manhandling this kid. <laughs> <laughs> and so the other guy's like, oh, I'll just talk to you later. And he walks off and then he's like. Yeah, what, yeah. Hey. Is that what he said? Yeah. There was, <laughs> no, there was no niceness. Like, he, yeah. he 
made me feel like oh, that you were inconvenienced. Like him. I had kind yeah. of been a slight, you know, like you couldn't have waited a few moments before bellying up to the counter. Like, no, dude, you're working a shift. This is a quick the job. trip. Yeah. Could you go find something else to buy, please? <laughs> like so, Ugh. because of that interaction, and I could see the little bit of frustration. I thought I'd just play into it, yeah. as is my nature. I like. I was just, well, I was using everything in my power. Not to burst out laughing when I was checking out I after have he walked away. I pay, I have paper money on me. Uh, he does. <laughs> Always well, today. Does. Today I learned. Uh huh. Because it's that time. Yep. Today I learned. Tell me. That Jason is more of a dick than I thought he was. No, that's impossible. <laughs> as, as we were leaving, we were talking about the whole Dirk situation. The kid who was behind the counter is like walking out to change the trash. And I'm like, I don't know who this Dirk guy is. And Jason's like, you want to find out? Rolls down the window and goes, who's Dirk? <laughs> and then rolls up the window while laughing diabolically. <laughs> and the kid just yanked, what? Huh? Yep. He's, tra he's trying to find who the heck is yelling Dirk to him. And <laughs> another guy is walking by and is like, what the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> yeah, good well, times. What did you learn today? Oh, man. I learned that, you know... No matter what happens in the world, you know, it's important to find the dirks <laughs> in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's focus on the dirks yeah. core. And, and not like all the horrible shit that right. is constantly drowning us. All right. yeah. Justin? I learned that I can detain somebody <laughs> if necessary. Yeah. I'll just shine a flashlight in their eye. They <laughs> won't know what I'm wearing. Right. They'll comply. <laughs> Well, that's it for tonight's show. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening, if that's the way you do it. Uh, check out Chupacabra Kid 2 coming to you soon on uh, TalkieBox.net. Long time coming. Yeah. Mm. It takes a long time to make these damn things. Mm. It's because we don't have a crew. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Or, like, the right equipment. And, yeah. And thanks to, uh, to Brad and to Dave yeah. and... To Brian, especially. We don't say enough shout-outs to Brian. That's true. Thanks yeah. to Brian. Shout thanks to Tony to Brian. for coming out tonight and helping yeah, us out. Thanks, thanks to Tony. Tony. Maybe he'll want to do it again. We're going to try and pull him back. Yeah. Maybe even get him a little saucier next time. <laughs> get him, oh, yeah. Get him cranked up on something. Yeah. Like, hey, man, what do you get riled up about? Tell us have from the shadow. Share his opinions. All right. Have a good night, everybody. You. Good night. Good night.